we have to do apparently under this new this new normal of open meeting. Um, so uh, additions uh, and adjustments to the uh, agenda. I would. I, yep. Go ahead. I'd like us to add uh, the uh, continuity of learning plan. Um, I sent out uh, I, I sent out the AOE guidelines, uh, a, a PDF uh, earlier this afternoon. And while we are not making our own continuity, continuity of learning plan, it's a, it's a SU's plan. Uh, I thought it was important that we kind of talk about uh, the four pillars of that and, and, and what things that we want to uh, uh, make sure are, are emphasized. Uh, so we should put that under nine one one under online learning. Kind of have been that. That, uh, that that works perfectly fine for me. Okay. Um, I was wondering uh, if we needed to discuss the uh, 2021 school calendar. Um, we do. We also the the other thing I was going to add. Uh, we also want to have a discussion about. Uh, um, What's being done to help our our our, our, our sixth graders uh, find find middle schools? Um, how uh, 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 how we can facil facilitate that for our families? Um, um, one other item, uh, we there was some technical snafus with our getting the announcement of the budget issue. That article that I posted, that thing that I wrote, um, the Herald had a bunch of issues with how it was written. So it didn't go in last week and I didn't have a chance to get back to her this week to redo it. So we have a chance to write an article for next week and just what we would like in that article. If we still want to talk about budget or if we want to talk about the education, the um, how it's going to change after the vacation. Anyway, just want if we can put it in there somewhere just to chat about that. Um, one other thing is that I'm going to have to get off at eight to put my son to bed because my wife is on at class, online class tonight. And I need to add executive session for a personnel matter. Hmm. And we're seeing that Jenny is not able to join the meeting. Uh, she's sending an email saying that, that, that she can't get in. I'm going to tell her to try her WRSB, her, her WRBSU account. Right. Um, does anyone else have any, any uh, other changes? Uh... Carl, did you get my executive session? Uh, yes, I heard executive session. Okay, just making sure. Is, now, who owns this meeting? Do you know? Is this, is, is, this is, this is owned by Ray, maybe? Carl, not by me personally, but by the conference system here at the SU office. Okay, because um, Jenny Austin says that she's trying to get, uh, she's trying to, to join the meeting and it's not letting, and uh, she's sitting in the waiting room, not getting in. So there's no waiting room. Uh, and I've seen no requests for admission. Hmm. That's, that's, I'm not that's sure who, who Jenny is. She's a board yeah. member. She's a, she's a, a, a board member, Jenny Austin. Austin? Yeah. I just sent her an, I tried to add her using her like mom email in case she's on that one. I know I can't accept people, but it looks like I can add people. I don't know if that'll work or not. Okay. Um, and so we also have, I'm, I'm assuming that the star star eight two is Ethan's uh, audio connection. No, it's Megan. That's Megan's audio connection. So Ethan is the private caller. No, Ethan's perfectly on without the private caller. Um, for our for the purposes of meeting attendance. The uh, eight two might be Orca Media. Okay. Well, eight two and the private callers, two separate things. Yep. Okay. Well. Let's uh, well, well, hopefully uh, Jenny figure Jenny and, and uh, um, Ray can sort things out. Let's go ahead and, and, and move forward. Um, do we have any uh, assigned times? I think uh, we need. Uh, I, I have no idea how much time uh, the administration people need. The board reports need. 
if we just try to be conscious of time and keeping the meeting move, meeting moving rather than actually assigning anything. Okay, let's. I, I think that I, I think that'll work. Um, keep let, let, let's 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 be very mindful. I, I would love to take Ethan's eight o'clock as a, as a as a stopping for all of us, not just for uh, uh, people with parental duties, because we've all got so much going on. Um, all right, so I second that motion. <laughs> <laughs> and, and for the most part, that means me keeping my mouth shut a little bit more than I usually do. Um, I'm looking for the agenda. That's a good one too. <laughs> I will if you will, Janie. <laughs> um, all right, so the consent agenda, we have uh, uh, minutes of the February 4th meeting to, to approve. I would entertain a motion to, uh, to do just that. I make a motion that we approve the minutes. Uh, a motion has been made. Do I hear a second? I'll second, Megan. Uh, beautiful. Um, we uh they came i'm looking for there here uh the uh minutes look reasonable to me does anyone have any comments or changes hearing none all those in favor of approving the uh the minutes as presented uh, signify by saying aye 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 opposed okay uh the uh, march 3rd minutes are approved the uh, special minutes I have not seen. Um, Carl, yeah, I'm not sure if I remember this correctly, but I thought that in one of the informations about how we did this, that we needed to call roll, um, or not. I, I I don't recall that, but let's let's, okay. let's do no, that. That's fine. If you don't remember that, that's fine. I just wanted to bring it up. Point of order. Okay. Uh, thank you. Um, so we. Uh, uh, I, do, I have not seen new minutes for that special Friday mi meeting. Um, has anyone else seen them? I think Christy sent them out, but I can resend. Let me see. Give me a second here. Yeah, I didn't read through them in entirety. Uh, that may have been why I missed them. No, sorry. There's a lot of board minutes. Give me a second here to get through. Well, we can... Do that next meeting. Is this four two? Uh, this is for the 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 the, the full uh, board Saturday. four two. No, no. The, the the Friday. There's that meeting you guys had. Three twenty. All right. Yeah. Found it. Hey Jenny. Hey Jenny. I just forwarded it to the whole board. I don't okay. know who had it and who didn't. Okay. There they are. All right. Take a quick look at it. Yeah, take a few minutes to look. That is really bright. Okay, um, I would entertain a motion to approve uh, uh, these minutes as presented. Uh, so moved. Do I hear a second? Seconded. A motion has been made and seconded to uh, uh, approve the, uh, the special meeting on Friday, March 20th. Uh, is there any uh, additions, changes, comments, uh, discussion of minutes? Hearing none, uh, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? <laughs> um, actually, you know, Ethan, speaking to your point, this is where, and I think we're, I think we're okay with the consent agenda, but is did, did, listening to everyone saying aye made me, made me realize that, that I believe this is where votes need to be taken by people acknowledging, um, you know, uh, uh, who said what. I think we can. We can. I, I'm, I'm happy that the minutes reflect that the board approved the uh, consent agenda unanimously. But for votes, for, for, for votes that aren't just housekeeping votes, 
I believe the the the, the open meeting guide uh, revision guidelines are that that uh, votes are taken by roll. So I think I, that's what you're thinking of. That's what just popped in the back of my head. So we state we state our name and and whether it's it's an I or an A. Yes, yes. Like I said, um, I, I think we. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I, I think that the way I've done it, seen it done before, is he actually reads down the list of just you know. We've done it with just the menu, and you just read down the board list and just right. Say, right. That's, that's call, how Don, call, that's call. Don's, Don's done it in the past. Because um, it also saves us all trying to talk at the same time when we're all unmuting. So that way we unmute right at that moment, then we mute back again. Noted. I think uh, again uh, uh, when it's it, it's a vote of uh, of uh, uh, you know it's not a unanimous uh, uh, housekeeping vote. I I, I agree. We'll, we'll step through it. Um, okay, so um, back to the agenda over here. Um, let's start with uh, uh, the principal's report. You want me to start, Lindy? You can't see me. I'm nodding my head and trying to unmute at the same time, but yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> Okay, so in no particular order, let's just say these things that um, our uh, virtual faculty meetings have begun. We've held our, our second one today. We'll hold our third one on Friday. Um, teachers are working uh, very hard to uh, sort of build the ship while we're flying it. Um, we have made contact through one person or another uh, with all the families in our schools. What we're finding out three, two to three weeks into this is that the same kiddos who we had um, some difficulty connecting with families while we were in the school, uh, we're sort of having the same difficulties now. Um, I think we're pleasantly surprised uh, at how few youngsters um, have difficulty connecting with um, online assignments. There are some. There are some families who uh, don't want technology. We've offered uh, more than once in their responses that they, they would rather not have it. So we, as we roll forward, we know we're going to be dealing with both online assignments as well as uh, paper pencil packets for some of our kiddos. Um, our lunch uh, program is going well. We just received word today from the um, folks in Montpelier that meals during the April break will be subsidized or paid for. So we will be delivering uh, meals during the April break. That's a change. Initially, we thought we were not going to be doing that. Um, but we found out today that indeed that is going to be a possibility. We're looking at the possibility of doing some bulk food distribution that week because one of the things about which we have concerns is the um, the food staff, the, the folks in the kitchen who are running the programs. Um, they need some time away. They need a break here or there. And we have to sort out what that's going to look like. But right now, everything in meals is, is going, I think, far better than anyone anticipated it might. Um, we have some parents whose uh, financial status um, is changing as a result of, of this closure and the closures of a number of businesses. Uh, we're staying abreast of that. Um, Lindy, what would you add at this point? Oh, our continuity of learning plan. Uh, one of the things the state's asked each district to do, and I see that's on our agenda for tonight, so we'll be talking more about that. Um, but we are uh, we have contributed to a draft uh, of that plan for the district. I see Mary Ellen's in the meeting and she's the one that was gathering that information. So she probably can speak to that and with more detail. Um, that is due to the state tomorrow and uh, our plan is is in a shape and a form so that it'll be delivered on time. I would say any student or family that needs a device to make this happen has contacted the school and has those devices at this point in time or has made arrangements to get a device with their meals in the next day or so. Families are starting to figure out device needs based on t technology needs for this extended um, period of time. I would also say we're working with teachers. One of the big things that came out is streamlining communication um, with a weekly update 
that just comes from one place because parents are getting a lot of communication and need some clarity around what is due and how long they should be spending on assignments for each subject area. Uh, I, have I, think that's it. The, I have a quick question about the devices. And it um, also is for uh, families that have devices in their, in their household, but are having trouble with them. Is there any type of support that we're able to offer technical support um, for these families or, or is that not really in our realm? I would say it's twofold. Um, there's some things that can be done, like if a kid gets locked out of their account because they type the password in wrong, which happens. Um, that's something that Ray and his team take care of remotely. We communicate with that with him. Um, and also I know just for myself alone, and I know other teachers have been working with families on the right tech support to walk them through. That's been part of this past couple of weeks, I would say, is setting up to make sure they understand how to use those. I mean, we all know how to get on Facebook, but using all these different components is right. new. I could see a learning curve for a lot of families who don't have a lot of technology and so needing that extra support. Um, in my household, we have technology, but Katie never really used it, uses her, used her computer. Um, I have a technical issue with the, her camera doesn't work for Google Hangout, but it works for Zoom. So, you know, it's, it's like that type of technical, do I need to go, do I, is there a way for me to get technical um, assistance or do I need to seek that out separately? You know, is that something we do or? So Amy, Ray, that's, that's something that we that we try and do. So if you let me know that's an issue, what I do is I send up a help ticket and either Ray or Larry or someone will see what they're able to do remotely. What they could have done. And I think Ray's in this. Ray, are you in this call? I don't think Ray stayed in this call. So no, I think okay. I'm really pretty inundated with all, all the rest of the technology that he's dealing with. So so families can contact the principals directly to if they had any um, so need some support with their devices. Yes, because sometimes we have a teacher on staff who can help you with that problem. And as you said, uh, Ray and his guys are dealing with a tremendous amount right now. So if a teacher can help, that's usually our first line. And then if they can't, we send off a, a, a help, an email to Ray and his crew. Right. Like I said, I can just imagine a lot of people are overwhelmed with the, this technology. So I want to make sure we have that out there for them. Yep. Okay. Sorry to interrupt. No, good questions. I think that's it, unless people have other questions about the technology. Um. Uh, oh, just we're, oh, just we're other thing, just one other thing to let the board know, as part of the governor's order yesterday, we have closed down the playgrounds and the fields. Um, just wanted folks to know that that's something that uh, that everyone has been asked to do. We've taken in the picnic table, taken down the basketball hoops. Um, they want us to do everything we can to discourage folks from gathering. Um, and so those are the steps we've taken. Uh, Bonnie, did the heat get turned off in the high school building? Yes, the heat's off and the heat's down in the elementary school building um, with the exception of the kitchen area to the extent that we can control that. And same in Stockbridge, the heat's been turned down significantly as well. Um, can you guys speak to uh, um, what the plan is around recording attendance and that whole 51% of the kids have to somehow be attending for it to count as a, a, as a day of of uh, schooling towards the 175. Do we have protocols in place and are, and are they working? Yes, we do. We have protocols in place. They start the 13th of April um, in terms of actually marking youngsters present or absent. Um, but our teachers began uh, today. Basically, we have a, we have a I'm sorry. Oh, sorry, I thought somebody had a question. Um, what the state has asked us to do is to identify whether youngsters are present or absent. Present is defined as the youngster making any sort of contact uh, with the teacher or with an assignment. So in our case, if a youngster goes online and does two IXL lessons, which the teacher can monitor remotely, or if they sit in on a Google Classroom, or if they do an assignment, take a picture of it and send it to her, if they email him or her, 
any sort of contact with the teacher or any sort of assignment is considered the youngster being present. Um, and we at our faculty meeting on uh, last Friday worked out that system. Um, and I think it's pretty, I think it's a pretty streamlined one. I also think it's very accurate. Teachers. Bonnie, is, just a quick question. Um, is that what exists now or is that what will exist as of the 13th? It actually it, it exists now, but it will be tweaked a little bit by the 13th and ready to go. I would echo that we just, we know from our staff and who we've talked to, who are the kiddos that we're not making daily contact with. So our staff keeps us up to date on that in both buildings. So we're able to try and make contact with those families. And I would say, just like Bonnie said earlier, it's some of the same families we struggle to connect with when we're in the building. Um, so oh. our numbers are pretty decent already, well above the 51%. And neither of us have a family that with whom someone has not made contact, okay. um, either the nurse, the counselor, I should clarify that too. Uh, the state indicates that uh, if a child um, connects with a counselor on a given day, a PE teacher, an art teacher, a classroom teacher, a school nurse, a principal, any of those, it's considered um, an attendance contact. And as Carl said, in order to count for a full day of school, we have to make sure 51% of our kids are present on any given day. And neither one of us anticipate that that's going to be even remotely a problem for us. Okay. Yeah, I was wondering if there was a need to send to do a blackboard across the district to just so all parents were aware that this was the new expectations for the kids. Um, I figured the people who we can't reach very often, they know when it's a snow day, though. We were actually, Lindy and I are actually working on a letter that we're going to send out that does do that, that identifies the new expectations uh, after the 13th talks about, you know, minutes per day, depending on the grade level, et cetera. So just sending a few more details as they've settled in. Excellent. And in general, how are the kids responding? You know, are, 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 are we getting kids that are, are, you know, enjoying this new engagement and, 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 and working with this? And, and I know that it's new and it's, you know, they don't have to go to school. So I'm sure there's there, there, there's a certain amount of a honeymoon kind of thing, but in general, do do, do, do we did is is the state of our, our kids' psyche good? Is it you know is 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 there things that that we we need to provide you guys tools to the administration to the teachers to 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 to, to make sure that our kids are are because the, the social emotional piece is the part that you know I'm. I'm okay if they catch up on Vermont history next year. I'm I, I worry most that you know are they uh, you know are, are are they staying in touch and staying connected and staying with their community? I think that's I'll be honest. That's what a majority of the first week or two teachers spent figuring out what technology is available to make sure kids can connect with kids as well as with teachers and do those social emotional check-ins for example our four five six does a morning meeting every monday to kick off the week but she's backed up the start time to like 9 15 i think off the top of my head so they can just have social time with each other and see each other uh because the first couple times was like we haven't seen each other you know that nobody's seen anybody so really figuring out how to make those social connections in a different way Actually, the first week, Carl, and I'm, I'm glad you brought that up because I think it's a really important point. The first week, week and a half, we really focused on teachers, our schools, counselors, anybody connecting with youngsters to let them know that we were still here, the school was still there, we were going to be fine, we were going to figure this out, we weren't going out of their lives. Um, because that was just so important in those first few days. To be frank, it was far more important than worrying about reading, writing, and arithmetic. Um, and I think we're, 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 Lindy and I talk about this almost every day. We're feeling, we're feeling really good about the connections that every, that youngsters are making with a variety of, of our teachers. The unified arts folks are getting on board. Um, for example, Mallory's doing some, uh, distance, uh, music lessons 
for kids who want to engage in that. And Lindy and I send a very clear message when we talk to parents about, you know, children have to get out. They have to get out and play. We are not going to replicate five or six hours of a school day in front of a screen. That just isn't how online design, you know, learning is designed. So if you have to choose between a teary child or a child who wants to go out and play, go out and play. Excellent. And um, one of the things that the, the, the stuff I've been seeing on EdTech uh, uh, discussion boards is the more that we can get the kids to engage socially through school and through some of the, 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 the online class platforms, the less likely they are to try to meet up at a playground or to try to go right. you know, to, to, to right. this other place. So I think it's, I think the more that we can provide that 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 social component, the the better we're going to be able to to do with social distancing and getting this over fast. Right, and I think the work, um, Aunt Lindy and I are very proud of the work that our teachers uh, have done. Um, youngsters are talking. The first week it was great fun, you know, like you say, everybody's out of school. I made a number of calls to talk with kiddos last night, and to a, to a youngster, they said they wish they were back in school. You know, they miss their friends. They miss their teachers. They miss, one of them told me he missed visiting me in my office. Um, so it was, um, it's, it's, it's not easy for these kiddos, what's happened so quickly to them. Does anyone have any other questions for our administration? Uh, nope, doing a great job, thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, okay. great work, thank you. Uh, Tara? Hello, everybody. Hello. All right, I only have a couple things for you tonight. Um, I sent you an email about Woodstock tuition. Didn't receive any response from any of you, so I assume there's no questions. And um, Lindsay and Bonnie are working on the next draft of budget cut. Okay. Whoop, let's uh, did you put on the agenda tonight that motion you need to make for Dina? Sorry, I was just looking at my notes. The motion that we need to make for Dina is not on the agenda. We can add it. Yes, that needs to be done tonight about your meeting. And that letter needs to be sent that she sent you. And her school report then, probably? Yeah. Okay. Um, I think also before before we make that, you know, we, we need to have a discussion about um, whether we're whether we're following the one piece of guideline that says postpone it so you can have it uh, you know, postpone it until the summer um, versus uh, just have it and make it Australian. And as I watch what's happening in Wisconsin. I'm not sure that you know saying okay, well we're going to go to a, 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 a polling place in May is necessarily a good idea. I'm still not clear exactly what this letter is asking us. Dina was asking us to uh, request a waiver um, uh, from the secret from the Secretary of State to hold an annual uh, uh, a meeting vote by Australian ballot. And I want to say it's the Vermont League of Cities and Towns, or it might be the VSBA, that, that, that was giving advice that if you haven't had an annual meeting, maybe to put it off until you can have an annual meeting. In other words, you know, don't, I mean, I think that you know, we would have had to, if, if, if we were going to, I mean, we, we would have to be authorizing a warning today, right, for 30 days before the first Tuesday in May. No, you don't need to do your warnings or anything to do this. This is just to get the acceptance and the approval if you want to waive your floor vote for Australian ballot. So this is not this is not us that I misread. No, this is not us saying that we were intending to change it to Australian ballot that by, 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 by doing this motion. It just gives us the opportunity to do it. But it says both boards have to deal with your upcoming annual meetings. So I thought I'd reach out to you about the process, at least initially, for how to address holding them. 
Since both of your districts' articles of agreement specify a floor vote for annual meetings, you are required under the new emergency changes to the election law to request a waiver of holding a floor meeting slash vote from Jim Condos. The board should authorize you to request a, a waiver from the Secretary of State so that you can do votes by Australian ballot. And she gives us what the exact wording of the motion needs to be. And she said, I'm assuming that your board will agree and that we can get that part done tonight. I have attached a letter which should be sent by email and hard copy um, that you should send it to Will and to Jim. But this is only for that purpose, just to have Australian ballot in the event that you need to hold your meeting before June 30th and we're not released to have public meetings yet. So otherwise, if you don't do it by June 30th, you get 87% of your last approved budget until you have an actual approved budget. By doing right. this motion and by getting this in the works, in the event that you decide to have your meeting, between now and June 30th, it allows you to do it by Australian ballot. I see, so it doesn't lock us into the May 5th meeting. No. We can still have a meeting later, but it just gives us the opportunity to do it by Australian ballot. Right, the part that I wasn't clear about is, I was, and I was hoping that I would have got some answer from Dina, but, you know, again, whether it's, whether it's the option, which is fine, I, I think it's keeping, you know, expanding our options and keeping all options open is a good idea, or if does this does this uh, uh, waiver mean, you know, it says maybe voted on without a, without a separate vote of the electorate. So I believe it means we can do it temper we can we can we can do it um, and not have to automatically go to Australian ballot. Right. This is only a one time thing given the emergency situation. Right, but it doesn't. If we pass this motion tonight, we are not required. We are not formally changing to Australian ballot. No. We could still have a floor, a floor vote if we decided we wanted to have a floor vote at the end of June. That was my understanding from Dina. But let me see if I can get her to answer me. Okay. Because, yeah, she was also going to uh, talk about the, the, the notice and the warning timeline, but I've not heard back from her on that. I don't know if anyone else has. What I think this letter does, Carl, is it preserves that option. I don't think it locks you into that option. Okay. Um, let me put that back up then. Um, so the language that Dina is asking for is, um, someone needs to move to authorize the board chair to, rec to request a waiver from the secretary of state such that annual meeting matters may be voted on by Australian ballot without a separate vote of the electorate. Do I hear a motion? I'm so at so move. I'll second it. A motion has been made and seconded to authorize the board chair to request a waiver from the Secretary of State such, the, such that annual meeting matters may be voted on by may be voted on by Australian uh, ballot without a separate vote of the electorate. Is there any other discussion? Then I'm going to go down the roll and everyone's going to answer. Um, uh, Megan. Aye. Amy. Aye. Ethan. Aye. Janie. Aye. Jenny. Hi. And is that wording in the email from Dina? Uh, if so, I'll copy it from for my notes. Yes, it's in it's uh, in her uh, one p.m. Uh, Wednesday, uh, April first email. Okay, I'll use that. Okay. Um, uh, hearing five eyes and, and, and no nays, the motion is uh, the motion is carried. And Bruce has just joined us. Hello, Bruce. How are you doing? Can somebody forward? Okay. Um, can somebody forward? Can you call that? Me for I'm sorry. What? Can somebody forward that to me? I don't see it in my inbox. I will forward you the email, but I also just put the language in the comments of the chat. Yeah, I, I just don't seem to see the actual email from Dina, so I just would like to. Oh, to it only that. went to Carl, so it didn't go to you. It only went to the board chair. Never mind okay. then. Okay. <laughs> but the wording I put in comments. Okay. I assume that was an entire board email. I didn't really study it. Um, well, 
Okay, that's why I was just a little like, mm, what is this? It's the first time I've heard of it. So that's ah. fine. When it's done, if I don't need it, I don't need it. <laughs> uh, I will send it to you because it, it talks, it, you know, it, 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 it's fairly, uh, it's, it's a fairly. Uh, Didn't like Jenny say she's going to put them in the notes? She said she was going to copy it and put it in the minutes. Yeah, she copied those. She copied the motion into the chat. Um, Bruce, the, 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 the memo from Dina is it's uh, we, we passed the motion with the understanding that 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 it is a uh, optional thing. We are not locking ourselves into moving to Australian ballot, but by by sending the waiver to the secretary of state, we um, we are we are we are allowed to have an Australian ballot this year only without having to talk the electorate first. Mm hmm. Yep. OK. It's a one time deal, I think. Yeah, that's what that, that, the, the one time deal part was clear in, in Dina's message. What wasn't exactly clear was whether passing this motion meant we had to now do Australian ballot this one time or it just gave us the option to if we if we felt that that was the, 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 the more prudent option towards the end of the year. Yeah, I think it is giving you the option. All right. Um, so uh, we were uh, hearing from you, Tara. Is there anything else we need to uh, report? I do not have anything else that I can think of at this moment. Okay, feel free to chime in if something occurs to you later. So Bruce that brings us the superintendent's report. Yeah, I guess um, I would I would say that um, you got the language today from me um, about um, the uh, April vacation and serving meals. Uh, the U.S. Department of Agriculture okayed that and. Uh, um, I did hear from one of the people, uh, Bill Bonsignor, who's been working with a lot of the um, cafeterias serving in, in the whole SU, uh, that he, he wrote to me today and said that, you know, the staff's pretty tired and some of them would like to bow out of the vapor vacation. And I said, look, we're going to have to pay them that week and they'll be making an extra week's worth of pay. Uh, in order to work because otherwise they wouldn't have been. So this will be the topic for the principals tomorrow as we meet to try to figure out how we're gonna do that and how our numbers look for that April week break. Um, but I'm pretty pr proud that everybody's kind of stood in there and uh, we pumped out an awful lot of food for for families and for kids um, over the time we've been doing this. Um, there's a Secretary of Education um, um, uh, conference on uh, Thursday that I'll be involved in. And I should, and you know, we have a full board briefing uh, that night um, at uh, six o'clock on Thursday. Um, we uh, today, uh, I know, Carl, you saw this because you were copied on the, the email, but we're going to try to start negotiations uh, via video conference. Again, um, the uh, union has sent out a COVID virus. Um, uh, they want to open up negotiations to be able to put some safety language around the COVID uh, problem uh, in the teacher's contract. Um, and, you know, we've already passed, uh, usually after the second meeting, we've passed the deadline for bringing new proposals, uh, but they're asking us to put it, to, to open it now beyond that point in order to be able to put that language in. Um, so, you know, basically, uh, we have uh, Dina and Bob Raskovich and myself and uh, the union president uh, have a meeting scheduled for two o'clock on Monday. And we're gonna see uh, how we can go forward uh, with uh, negotiations. Um, we, I will tell you honestly, anybody that has attended them, we're not, we're not moving very fast and uh, we're kind of stuck. Uh, would you say that, Carl, uh, at this point? Uh, your mic's off. <laughs> oh. 
Uh, uh, I don't know. <laughs> it's uh, it's uh, uh, been there's not been a lot of movement on 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 their side of the table. Um, there has uh, you know it's to be to be honest. If we had probably had another meeting or two, we would have we would have been going to impasse. At least that's my my sense of it. Are you, are you agree with me, Bruce? Yeah, I absolutely would agree with you, and I think that was the feeling of the rest of the negotiating team too. Not just just not just us. I think it was everybody on that team. They're pretty frustrated. Didn't Kathy and Carl? Didn't you talk about having scheduling one more meeting and get and then getting to that point where you would go there? I thought that was it, like one of the last full board meetings. Yeah, no, that was that it, 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 exactly, exactly. But we haven't been able to. You know, everything's kind of um, uh, until the the open meeting law um, got changed to allow, you know, a meeting to happen without there being a physical place and a physical presence. I think most of the subcommittee work um, uh, went to the sidelines so that we didn't have to put someone at the SU building or at a at a, at a school building uh, in, at a necessary risk. Um, I think now that we can we can have a meeting, I think. You know, without having to, to have a physical presence, um, you know, we can uh, we can move forward on that. And I think, you know, I, I think we should. And as Bruce points out, you know, the, there's a it's all, negotiations are kind of a very kind of sort of complicated labor kabuki dance. And so the first thing that happens, you set up what the ground rules are and whether meetings are open to the public or whether whether uh, there can be public com comment about what happens in the meetings. Um uh, you know, or whether they're under kind of a, a, a media blackout. Um, and then very early, the idea is get, get the new language or the changes everyone wants on the table, on the table, um, and then kind of move from there, move, you know, try, try to move, move closer. So they're trying, number one, the movement, at least so far, has been really more on our side. Um, and then, you know, to, 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 to try to say, okay, well, we want to reopen the negotiations because we want to add additional uh, additional issues um, around uh, uh, around safety or whatnot. Um, you know, I, I think, I, I, as I understand it, uh, the meeting with Bruce and, and uh, Bob and Dina is without board members. Um, it's just for Bruce to kind of hear what they're having to say and um, for them informally to be able to say what their safety concerns are. And as I understand it, once once Bruce and Dean have heard all that, that you know they'll bring that back to the committee, and we'll decide if you know this, you know how we want to proceed and, and, and how to go, um, you know uh, uh, how to go forward. Um, yeah, I, I, basically, it's a, it's a prep meeting to figure out how we're going to structure moving forward, and it does include both topics. One is moving them and doing video conference and how unwieldy that might be. Um, and also um, the COVID thing and the safety concerns that they want us to open the contract to put back in. Um, so I've been on the phone today with Dina trying to get this arranged and we thought it would be best to have a small meeting first and then uh, if everybody's agreeable, scheduling something so we can deal with this um, as a group uh, and that's where we are. The only other thing I'll tell you right now is that Jamie and I have been meeting and we're trying to kind of take apart uh, piece by piece all different kinds of things having to do with the SU <laughs> and each district. <laughs> we met for about an hour and a half on Monday. We've got another appointment uh, on uh, next Monday and uh, we have um, kind of a, a document that we're working from, so we can be very comprehensive about the way we approach this. And we don't keep going over the same things, and we kind of move into areas that we need to talk about. And there's all kinds of different things. So um, I think that's been a good thing for him, and it's been a good thing for me. Uh, we already had a relationship before he was hired, so I've known him for a while, and uh, and uh, so it's a pretty pretty good uh, collaboration, I think. Uh, and I want him to do well, I really do. So, 
Mm-hmm. And uh, have Deb and, and Don been having similar meetings? Um, I know that uh, Deb and Don have known each other for years and uh, from back in the early days, you know, uh, <laughs> I, I guess I don't know whether, whether what Deb has, you know, how much interaction Deb has had, but I'll mention it to her. <laughs> um, this is certainly a lot newer hire. So uh, anyway. Great. I just want to point out we're at 722 now. Yep. Uh, does anyone have any other questions for Bruce? I just added Dino's response to comments in case you're not all looking at your comments. Yes, Dina says that it is. It, it just preserves that as an option for us. So moving forward, uh, online learning. I think Mary Ellen's on this. Um, she's been the one that's kind of done a lot of the work uh, bringing the teachers along on, on our new plan. So I asked her to be on here because she can speak to it much better than I can. So. So for online learning, we've been meeting with every teacher in grade alike meetings across the SU. And we're finding that in every grade, there's a couple of students that can't access online, but a majority of them can, I would say. So we're providing online resources and um, we've been working with the tech department with Ray to vet the, the programs to make sure that they are meeting the requirements that we set for the SU. And um, we're working also on activities for those students who do not have internet access. So that's as far as the connectivity on that. I think the other question that Bruce might be referring to is our continuity of learning plan. Yeah, that's one of the things that I was trying to get to. I thought maybe that's where Carl and the board wanted to go next. So our continuity of learning plan is a state requirement that we fill out what is our plan for the whole SU going forward. How are we going to um, support the students in their learning? So we have a multiple page document explaining everything from the communications we're gonna have with families, how do we support struggling students? Um, uh, I can't even think of this. There's 11 different areas. Is that, that the document that Carl sent us? That's the um, template of it, yes. Oh. And then we filled it out specifically for our SU. And we're right now in the process of getting feedback from faculty and staff and then it'll go to the state, hopefully tomorrow. So that's where we are with that. Right, um, the, 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 the continuity, continuity of learning plan has to address four, out, four uh, main areas, which are communication, structures for student success, instruction feedback, and ensuring uh, accessibility. We've, we, we, we've kind of talked about communication and ensuring accessibility in terms of, uh, of, of, of the technology. Um, you know, and I, what, the, the thing I wanted to make sure the board had, had a chance to weigh in with was to touch base with the administration and make sure that, uh, you know, that, that the plan that the SU is putting forward uh, supports what we need to do in our two schools. And if there's areas that uh, uh, you think that need to be strengthened or, or uh, uh, discussed further, um, you know, the, the, the document that, that I read from the, from the AOE, the, the one that I, I circulated, the reference guide, you know, it, it, I, I'm really comfortable that if we have a good plan that our administration supports and our SU supports, it really does seem to, 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 to give a good, uh, a, a good path forward. I just wanted to make sure that our administrators uh, felt that uh, it, it supported their efforts. So Carl, both Bonnie and I were on the K-6 committee with Mary Ellen to help draft this. So I feel really confident. I haven't read it word for word. Like she took a lot of data and a lot of information from us already. And she's definitely fine tuned it. I haven't read it word for word, but in what I've reviewed so far, it's what we're doing and what we know that is working for our families and our kids and our teachers. Most importantly, they've got to be able to figure out how to do it too. So. And, and a big part of the plan is what do we do if one of our teachers gets sick or has an extended absence because they have a family member that gets sick? So we wanted to um, set into motion a plan that is consistent across the SU so we can share resources. So if there is a first grade teacher in Rochester, for example, that gets sick, 
we can take the plan that we have in place for all first grade across the SU and put it right into place the next day. And so they won't be missing a beat. It's all tied into the proficiencies that we've been working on for the last four years with learning scale supporting that work that is available for families to keep the learning going. And um, it, you know, it works with or without the teacher really. I mean, ideally we want the teacher there, but uh, in the worst case scenario, we're covered. Excellent, thank you, Mary Ellen. Um, the biggest part for me, the biggest question is the, is the number five uh, under um, student success, which is the, the, you know, making sure we have a plan to uh, collect feedback and understand and monitor the effectiveness of the plan. Because what, in, in my experience with, with, with projects like this, it's always the you know, getting the feedback, modifying, tweaking, the continuous improvement sort of cycle that I guess when I was more in the corporate world, they were, they were, they were banging into my head. So I think as long as the, in my mind, as long as the plan has good ways for us to, to gather feedback, respond and react to that feedback and make, you know, make our plan continuously more effective and make our, making our, our access to, to the kids continually more supportive. You know, that, that to me is the most important part. Yep. Yeah, one of the big indicators we look for there, Carl, Wendy and I have talked about this, is the level of engagement. If we've got, you know, a high level of engagement from our youngsters, then we're going to make the assumption that our plan is working and, and, and working well. Um, and it, to this point, we are pleasantly surprised, to be frank, of how much engagement we do have. Now, there's engagement and then there's the quality of work that's being done. So right now I'm just speaking to the engagement level, but that certainly is going to be a significant indicator for us. If we had large numbers of youngsters who weren't checking in, who weren't taking advantage of what we're offering, then I would be worried uh, about our plan. A little bit of a worry for me, so far they've, they've held up and, and they're doing the job okay, but one of the things that we were going to replace next year were the uh, computers for teachers at Rochester. Uh, Lindy replaced hers, I think, last year, and we were going to replace Rochester's this year. But some of our teachers are working with 10, 12-year-old computers. And fortunately, they're holding up to what they need to be able to do. But that is a concern. Um, uh, what do I want to say? The robustness of these, of these machines certainly is, is not up to snuff. But our student computers were, were, in, pretty, were in very good shape with those. Okay, um, and you know, it, I, obviously, you know, I, we would rather, I think, keep things on the, the the standard replacement cycle. But these are different times. So, do you need us to to, to, to make some sort of motion or authorize you to do some some kind of uh, uh, early ad hoc uh, system replacement, or, or do you think we're good? I, I think at this point we're good. If if we start having difficulty with them, we'll have to move pretty quickly to get them replaced. So just knowing, I don't think I need a motion from the board. I think what Lindy and I need is just knowing that the board supports us getting teachers the tools they need to, to do this online learning. And Bonnie, I would imagine um, that you'd have to plan that in advance. I would think that both the delivery and the acquisition of technology these days is going to be difficult to get. That is, that's correct. All right, does anyone else have any other questions on online learning? Um, nine meals. I'm sorry, Carl, what was that? I didn't get what you said. Oh, I, I said that uh, it's, it, I asked if anyone had anything else to say about Ooh. online learning and then hearing no one. Okay. Uh, I, I was moving to 9.2, which is meals. And I think we've pretty well covered that unless there's something else that needs to be dropped into that conversation. No, I don't think so. We're feeding people. Our staff is getting, uh, is, is, is getting stretched, but they're getting the job done. Um, yes. You know, we talked about doing bulk food and we're doing food over break. So I think that, does anyone else have any questions about meals? They were saving for 9.2. Okay, uh, 9.3 budget review. So I think like Tara said, we got her email about um, the Woodstock tuition that wasn't paid that will have to come out of the surplus. Right. So um, we all feel the same way. 
so I might be able to explain a little bit more in executive session, but we're starting to slowly work our way through that. Things obviously have been more focused on making sure staff and kids are up and running. Absolutely. So. And again, you know, as far as as far as our budget and 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 when we're having our meeting, we haven't gotten uh, guidance from Dina about whether the 30-day warning window has been uh, uh, suspended or changed. Um, this, I kind of agree with the stuff I've seen from the Vermont League of Cities and Towns and the VSBA that's saying, in these uncertain times, you know, um, kicking the can down the road is not such a bad idea for a little bit. Um, so we know what kind of what, what kind of situation we're putting forward. I, I think the same thing is true with the building committee sort of work. Um, so I, I, I think let's stay tuned on uh, let's stay tuned on the budget. Uh, and wait until we get some more guidance about what's going on. Sarah, Sarah, when do you expect to? Are you there? Let's be unmuted. I am sorry, I got food in my mouth. Okay, sorry. Um, do you? I, I'm hoping that we're going to have the audited numbers in the budget next time we see it. Um, Rose went through and made all of her notes. I have to finish up my notes, and then we have to send them all back to the auditors for corrections. Okay, so is that so we? So we probably are not going to see those audited numbers in our in our next budget. You're thinking. I would hope so. Okay, well. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> and your other email that you asked me about, Amy? Yes. That is one of the things that we're trying to iron out with the auditors. They are not reflecting the student activity accounts the same way we are. Okay. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. Let me go ahead. That's okay. I do have a couple questions on the expenditure that um, uh, report that you sent out, but I'm just gonna um, try to talk to you the, uh, personally on those. I don't need to take up everybody's time. Are we? I know Bruce. You mentioned in the beginning. Are we saving any money time that schools are not open, or is it just you know six of one, half a dozen of another? salaries i mean but other than that there's no field trips going on there's no uh there's a, a lot of things that you know we're not spending money on equipment uh per se uh the buildings have been pretty much uh the heat's been lowered and they've been they're working on cleaning them um so yeah i think we're going to save some money but i can't tell you how big a sum that is um uh, So I think you're going to have maybe a surplus next year, but um, I hope you do anyway. Uh, I think uh, we can't possibly, it can't possibly be like it usually is because of this. Um, and certainly there's been uh, just just equipment and, and um various other things that we usually do that we haven't had to do. We're still paying salaries, uh, transportation, and tuition, so you're not going to save any money on those. Yep. So if I go down to the very end of that expenditure sheet that you gave me that ends uh, March 31st, it does, the way I read it, it shows that we have basically 12% of our budget left. Are we... We have more than 12% of the year left. Sorry, I was talking and my mic was off. You should also remember, Amy, that there's been things encumbered on that too, like salaries, like things that are known. So while okay. it says that 12% of our budget is left, some of that includes the encumbered piece too. It should, yeah, it should. I would assume it would be everything that's encumbered as well. Well, okay, does, regardless of what the numbers are, what percentage of the year are, is left? Do we know? I think it's like 10 weeks, but don't quote me on that. 26% like as of March 31st. 26? March 31st, thank you.
Does anyone have any? Taking 177 days and dividing it by 131 days, which is how many days we have had through March 31st. Got it. Okay. 131 do, days. Do we have an official last day of school? No, not yet. But I expect we'll have one in the next week or so. Uh, I believe it was somewhere around the 15th or 16th of uh, June. Um, but I, I, I have to ask for a waiver for the three days we got out before everybody else did. We got out on the 13th and uh, most of the others didn't get out until three days later. Uh, and we did kind of a preemptive thing. It's just kind of a formality, but uh, I'm going to ask, I'm going to write that tomorrow asking for permission to do a waiver on the three days we got out early. Um, so. Now, you know, uh, uh, but before you got on the call, Bruce, Bonnie and, and Lindy were, were pretty confident that uh, we were going to have no problem getting 51% uh, of our kiddos to touch base with uh, their teachers or, 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 or counselors uh, in, in some, some form every day. So they indicated that they weren't worried that we were going to, lose to, to quote virtual snow days when when you know kids don't show up barring ec fiber or fairpoint not just not just yeah explode. i'm equally as confident carl i don't believe that there's going to be any problems with that everybody has been so flexible the rules are just kind of out the window i mean i don't want to say they don't matter but i want to say that this is such a different kind of venue circumstance than than we've ever had before um okay yeah, and, and i don't think anybody's really stuck on some of those things that's why i say if we ask for a waiver for the, those three days i've been told that nobody's going to bat an eye it'll be fine okay so we're gonna we're, we we can all kind of assume that our last day of school is going to be what our last day of school was because we'll get all well, the, I, I mean i haven't heard the official call on that uh, I think there's hope being held out. There's there's a May date May that they, people have been pointing to. I don't know what that really means. Um, I think people are maybe thoughtful and hopeful that they might be able to restart schools in May. Um, I don't know. I mean, they keep bringing that May 8th date as another kind of benchmark. Um, so I don't know, but nobody's really made that call. Uh, I think they're including where we are right now in the 175 days that we have to go, uh, and they're clicking down, you know. So, all right. Well, uh, let us know if uh, you get any, uh, any any more formal formal word on that. But it's well, we might get it as soon as Thursday when we get on with the Secretary of Education. I don't know. So, okay. Does anyone have any more comments on the the budget review for Tara or for Bruce or for the administration? Okay, let's move on to uh, 9.4, the school report. So um, basically, obviously, as this has started, I, I have not done any work more further work on the report. Um, but I do remember in our that special meeting, that Friday meeting we had, we did talk about how it could be very useful to have this report go out still, um, even without a scheduled date for the actual meeting, you know, maybe even without a warning inside of it um but i just need some i just need some instruction as to whether i should be spending time on this or whether it should just wait until we know when we're doing something i would lean towards i mean uh, uh, collecting some of the stuff that you know is fixed if you've got the, i mean you know you, you you now have kids at home you now have uh, a whole different situation so i don't you know, saying, well, yes, just get this done, Ethan, because you can get it done. Um, you know, if you've got some capacity and some bandwidth to, uh, to, to, to work on some of the things that are more fixed, like uh, student pictures and things like that, um, the SU reports. But otherwise, I think it's, you know, it's, it's, it's not the, the highest of priorities. At least I, yeah, what, I, I guess that's it. I mean, it, it, it obviously, we have the template that Jenny created. Um, we have not put I did discover that it's much better for um, graphics to import an entire Excel file as opposed to 
taking the uh, PDF and trying to put that in the annual report. So there are more things from Terra that I could get. And obviously we're waiting on, you know, then we're just waiting for super superintendents reports and principals reports and things like that. Um, but I can, I can spend some more time on uh, explaining. I know Amy, we were talking to you about the, yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, that Tax that one report there. Um, I, I think what I'll what I can get to is I can what I don't know I can get questions out to people and maybe you can take a moment to get back to me. So I, I will keep working on it, but we won't work on it with a sense of priority. We'll just work on it in a sense of right. let's get it done because it is going to be a, hopefully our template from now on. And right, we're and working on a template for all our annual meetings from now on. Yeah. The other thing, the other thing, Ethan, I would say is at whatever point we decide to send it out, we, uh, both the board and the administration, should at that point probably write a letter sharing as much as we know at that point. It would seem to me odd, given the circumstances we're in, to send out a school report that makes no mention of how we've done the last six weeks or eight weeks or whenever this report goes out. So I think in some ways. Um, you know, we can turn those letters around pretty quickly, but once we decide when the report's going out, I think our letters should reflect what we're doing, how we're doing, and where we believe we're headed. Right, and, and we don't even have a budget, really. We have work we don't do on the budget, so it, it's not like something we could get out in the next week or two anyway. Right. But So I, I slowly trudging forward sounds like a good plan. Okay. Keep it, I'll keep it in, keep it moving. All right, uh, does anyone have any other comments about the school report? Nope. Okay, then we can uh, we can move on to, uh, we have an executive session, so. Um, Hold on, we have, there's there's the things that got added, which right. were. Um, well, we talked about uh, the, 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 the thing I added in, in the um, online learning at 9.1.1 or whatever, when we talked about the continuing learning plan. We had an executive session, and what was there was one more thing. There was three more things. You, you, you I believe somebody had added um, sixth grade finding middle school. Oh, that's right. I can't believe I completely forgot that. Yes. And, and then the announcement in the paper, um, and then I had put on the twenty twenty one school calendar. I didn't know. I didn't know if we needed to discuss it. Um. So the 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 concern. You know, we we have uh, how many sixth graders between the two campuses? Uh, Rochester has eight, I believe. We have five in Stockbridge. So we have a uh, 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 thirteen kids. We have to we have to uh, you know normally we'd be having a a, a middle school fair right around now, um, and that ain't going to happen. Um, do we so I think our school counselors have been reaching out to families and are starting that process in a new way with the sixth grade families to try and walk them through what questions do they have, what information do they have, do they need, and how can we get that out to them to help them support the decision making right. process. Right. I was, the group at Rochester, Carl, for a variety of reasons, most of them made uh, made the decision early on. Many of the parents, I'd say most of the parents are, are settled on where the youngsters are going to go. Okay. Kind of pretty similar in Stockbridge with the exception of maybe two kiddos. Okay. Who it depends if you talk to the kid or the parent. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we have one of those, depending on who you talk to. Okay, because you know I, I was wondering, do we want to like get to get families mailing addresses and send them to all the school, you know, the, the schools we send kids to, and have them send packets? Um, you know, I, 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 what I don't, what I, what I, you know, I, I, I think the counselors are is, is a good, is, the counselors are a good approach. Um, you know, I just don't want, I, I'd, I'd like us not to, to put it on your guys' plates to be, you know, tracking this down as well. Um, and I don't want kids to, to 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 necessarily fall through the cracks because they didn't get you know they 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 didn't get 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 reached out to or didn't really understand the choices. I think the Stockbridge families are pretty savvy. They've been doing this for years and years and years. But the Rochester families, you know, really understanding what their choices are and you know where they where they can go. Let's like I said, I thought maybe maybe sending you know Woodstock and and uh, 
Randolph and TSA and 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 uh, White River and you know uh, Rutland and Middlebury or wherever we send the kids, Harwell, you know, send send those people and say, here's our sixth grade families. Send them what you want to send. Send them packets if you want. Just I was trying to. I, what I was my biggest concern was having you guys, you know, having to to manually sit with each family and say. Woodstock is like this. If you want your kid to play hockey or football, that's a place you might want to have them go. Right. PSA is like this. You know, Randolph has that. I, you know, I, 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 I think putting the burden on the on the, the receiving schools rather than, than necessarily on you guys trying to make a virtual a virtual online town hall or something uh, was 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 my my interest in this. I think for both buildings and talking with Bonnie is these parents seem to be a little more aware that they needed to start the process as early as possible. I don't think our kiddos will get to do school visits. I think that's the one thing you know, that I know some kids had planned um, for after spring break that's going to go by the wayside. But I think these parents have been asking, at least in Stockbridge, a lot of the parents have been asking questions as early as October. Um, just about transportation, logistical things, and who to contact. Okay. I think one of the dynamics, too, that changes year to year is how many are oldest children in the family versus middle or youngest. Right. Uh, there's, there's a number of Rochester sixth graders that have siblings that are already um, well-established at schools, and that's just the parents' decision that we're going to stay at one school. And, you know, my brother went there, and that's where I'm going. Okay. Um, all right. Uh, so 2021 calendar. Yeah. Can we put it up here somehow, Ray or Mary Ellen or somebody? So that um, they can look it over. Well, my question was, um, and I had asked Lindy about this as well, but um, this current year we, we went to school, we chose to go to school on town meeting day because we felt that it was, we we're going to have more quality education in March than we were uh, in June. And uh, I was wondering if we wanted to do that again. I mean, it makes sense, but it's, I put it in your guys' hands. It's, it's you're the educators. <laughs> um, the way we left it, Amy, and to everyone is that we would still use those days and just get approval as needed, I guess, to try and stay as aligned as possible right now. But we can, I mean, if you guys have a different direction that you want us to advertise it. Well, I'm just concerned that we're, you know, we are trying to be as uh, unified as possible with the issue. And, and so, um, you know, we tried to realign these calendars for last year, but, but then, you know, Sharon, had like a whole different April break than we had. And I was like, well, and they had a lot of stuff that was not aligned with us. Not, not last so, year. Not last year. But they had in the past. Uh, but last year we were pretty unified. They did ask for a waiver. They didn't get it. Uh, you know, the rule is that we have to have the same calendar for the SU. Uh, and we have to follow Randolph's calendar. So, I mean, those are the those are the rules. And we've had a couple little exceptions like Humber Fair for the F club schools and things like that. But, um, you know, I'm not going to be here for any of this calendar. I, we've, we, but we've spent two months probably working on it. Uh, and it's been, it hasn't been a labor of love. <laughs> it never is. But, uh, you know, I think what you're seeing is where, what we came up with collaboratively and in a unified way. So, and you do feel that this all schools, with the exception of that Tunbridge um, Fair Day, are, are going to follow this same calendar. There's no other. Yes, 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 they have to. <laughs> they have to. I mean, and and when I was new, there was a lot of exceptions and things that you know, people had done traditions and whatever. But in the last couple of years, uh, we've come closer and closer to being unified every year. Okay, do, does our individual board need to approve this? Whoa, you're presenting. Oh, there we go. Sorry. It just took me a while to find where it was, but um, there's the calendar. I know you presented this at the uh, SU uh, board and I just didn't know if there's something at a uh, local level we needed to do with this calendar. No. Okay. 
calendar. I don't, calendar. I don't think you have to approve it necessarily. If you want to, you can, but um, um, we have to, have to send, send, it send it in. in. Because I, I wanted, wanted to see it before, before we do that. that. All right, just so whatever, 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 whatever you might want. There's a lot There's of feedback, guys. <laughs> Caller ending in ending in eight. Can you mute yourself with star six, please? As far as, as, far as the, 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 the budget, the budget uh, 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 calendar, uh, calendar, uh, calendar. Hmm. I can't. I can't. Megan, can Megan, you do this on, on your phone? Do we do know we, what's happening? What's happening when? Um, um they, they they as the, as the, the owner. Owner. Whoever, Whoever the private is, 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 is making you your mic. I'm I'm just seeing an entire screen, somebody's screen of their computer with all the tabs and everything. Lindy's presenting <laughs> with uh, Lindy presenting the uh, uh calendar, which <laughs> Oh, well, so we're still working on that. I, I didn't know what we were doing. Yeah, we, we, we were wrapping it up. Um, we just had uh, we just needed to get uh, we had a, a big feedback loop we had to get get dealt with. So um, I was saying the, uh, uh, the 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 school calendars are part of are, are part of the SU's purview, not part of uh, of, of ours. So all we could do is request a, a waiver if we wanted to change. We don't. We don't uh, have the, the the power to approve or deny. We just take the schedule the SU approves. So I guess our power is in our SU vote. So that's where that's where that stands. Do you have anything else about the calendar, people? Any other questions about that before we move into executive session? Um, because of the way recordings work, um, we need to. Um, Carl, we can't pause and re-record. Carl, there was, uh, I believe Ethan had added to the agenda about the um, announcement that had been written. If we had an announcement from our board that we wanted to, to present to the public about the delay in our annual meeting and, and, and et cetera, I'll go ahead, Ethan. Um, well, yeah, I just was curious if we still wanted to put something in the Herald. Um, it, it, for various reasons, it didn't get in back when we posted it on the Facebook pages and stuff like and front porch forum. Um, it's there, they're willing to present it as long as I reword it. I didn't know this before, but they can't take something from us that's in the first person. Um, it has to be an, as an article. So right. um, I could rewrite it like that and send it out. If we still think it's valid, it's a little old now, a couple of weeks. I don't know if there's anything else we want to put out, but I can also just let it hang until we feel like we do have some something interesting to put out there the information certainly gotten out there right um bonnie lindy do you have an opinions is there is there some statement you'd want to make to a wider forum on the herald you you saw what i wrote right bonnie lindy uh yes sorry it took me a second to get unmuted you would think yes, I'd be sorry, better. Me too. <laughs> um I really liked what you guys put out there because I felt like it was very straightforward and explained everything. Um, I don't know that much has changed unless you want something in there about continuing education, but I worry that that might confuse kind of a couple things at once. And what you're really trying to point out is that we're working on a budget, it's all coming, but we're trying to be mindful of the pandemic we're in and follow all those guidelines. Okay. Well, it can't hurt to have more information out there. So I'll, I'll, I will rewrite it and get it to Martha and it'll be in the paper next week. And just one of the things I would say, one of the things we're hearing back from parents, um, and I think, I think you did do a fine job when you wrote that. One of the things that we're hearing back from parents is there's almost too much information 
So when you read it, to write it in a, in, a, in a different person, if there's anything that you would think would be extraneous that could come out while still having the essence of the facts there, mm -hmm. that would be the only thing I would say. It certainly appears like short and to the point is what parents are able to, to, to deal with at this point. Jenny, when we first put it out two weeks ago, Jenny added some really great um, sort of acclaim for all that was happening with the food service and the teachers and everything like that. And I feel like that we've moved on a little bit. That might be one area, Jenny, if you don't mind, I might edit that down just to get us to a shorter, shorter piece. How do you feel about that? Jenny, are you here? Yeah, that works. Yeah, that works. I just had to unmute. Okay. I think that by putting it in the paper, we will reach a possibly a generation that doesn't have kids in school, but is very concerned about our budget right. and definitely our paper readers and not Facebook. <laughs> All right. Now, is that the last additional thing that I've been trying to skip over, Amy? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for keeping me on task. <clears throat> I'm kind of glad I'm not your kid. <laughs> this, is, this is why I, I, I miss our open meetings is because you can never hear people laugh because you have to like unmute to laugh. And it's like, no, 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 no. <laughs> Indeed. Um, OK, so to uh, from what I understand, we really can't um, pause and unpause the recording. If we stop recording, we need to make a second uh, recording. So we are going to go into executive session to discuss a personnel matter. Um, our next meeting is uh, also via a Google Hangout. It will be uh, Tuesday, uh, May 5th at uh, 6.30 again. We'll all be meeting here in uh, cyberspace. Um, um, and we will be publicizing we'll, the, the Hangout numbers and, and, and PIN information uh, with the agenda. Will we meet earlier if we actually, if we have a budget has been oh, presented? Uh, for that time? Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. If, 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 if situations warrant, we will certainly uh, uh, call special meetings and, and, and all that. And to be actually, to be fair, we probably, I, I, I can't imagine us going a month of just like, okay, then we can, you know, not have to worry about anything till May. So uh, there may well be a special meeting somewhere in there. All right. Um, I would entertain a uh, motion to adjourn the public session and go into executive session. Lindy, do you want me to stay for the executive session? You want me to stay for the executive session? I don't <laughs> even know. Yeah, I, no, I'll stay, but I'll just, I'm still at the office. I got to drive a half an hour no, home. No. Tara, I can catch you up. I think I've already told you this, anyways. So. Okay. You guys have a great night. Thank you. You too. You too, Tara. Thank you. Yeah.